The headline is Jordan Bennington. Once again, center stage, spotlight, mask off, gloves down, stick down. Let's go Jordan Bennington. Now, as a quick aside, maybe the answer is, and I might be missing someone, forgive me if I am. The question is, when was the last time the league's number one villain was a netminder? Ron Hextall, Philadelphia Flyers? Probably. Although there were some pretty nasty acts of business around when Hextall played. But right now, make no mistake about it, public enemy number one is Jordan Bennington, netminder for the St. Louis Blues, has driven a number of teams crazy, whether it's the Pittsburgh Penguins, whether it's the San Jose Sharks. I know I'm going to leave out a whole bunch here, or as we saw last night, the Minnesota Wild. Jordan Bennington is center stage. Now, really, if you're looking for a villain from last night's situation between St. Louis and uh, Minnesota, and by the way, Bennington has a hearing today, for his roughing slash unsportsmanlike attack on Hartman, cost of doing business. Um, if you're looking for the real villain last night, the real villain might not have been Jordan Bennington. The real villain may have been David Brisebois, who was the linesman who was holding Jordan Bennington back. And I know we've seen linesmen hold Jordan Bennington back a lot, and that just continues. I think to infuriate, infuriate other teams, other players, and certainly other fans. And at times we've seen Craig Burby not really impressed with the goaltender's act. Stick to making saves. He didn't do that last night, surrendering five, and then going at the Minnesota Wild bench. The last time we saw someone go to a Minnesota bench like that, the name was one sink. With the Boston Bruins, old school fans, that's one for you right there. But the villain might have been David Brisebois, who ended up holding him back. You know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons um, why I loved Paul Stewart as an NHL referee is he hated scrums. He hated scrums, and there was scrum in front of the net, in front of the goaltender, and guys would, you know, push and shove, fake tough guy acts, face wash here and there, chop on the ankles. He hated it. So he will he would pull linesmen out of scrums. Lineys get out. If you're gonna fight, fight. If not, break up. But I'm calling your bluff. That's what Stewie did on the regular. Hands up, how many people last night really would have wished that David Breezewell would have just said, it's unfair just to grab one combatant. Insert the Kevin Collins joke, the obvious one here. Again, that's for you old school fans. It's unfair for me to just grab Jordan Bennington when Marc-Andre Fleury is loose and wanting to punch Jordan Bennington. Maybe I best just let go and see what happens. That would have probably been to the delight of everybody in the building, watching, following online. Paul Stewart probably would have done that. And probably in a different era, that's what would happen. Have happened, But to the point about Jordan Bennington becoming and really firmly cementing his position now as public enemy number one, very appropriate that Ric Flair was in the building last night to watch that one because make no mistake about it, so much of Jordan Bennington's act is ripped right out of the pages of professional wrestling. It's the heel act. It's the hide behind the referee. It's the attack the unsuspecting. It's the uh, the taunting when you're losing, all of that. The whole act is pro wrestling. And a lot of pro wrestling fans go right along with it. Either they understand it or they don't, but make no mistake about it. This is completely a pro wrestling spectacle that we're seeing from Jordan Bennington. I personally have no problem with it. I have no problem with it for a number of reasons. One we see a lot of emotionless games and this isn't the only way to fire up emotion. I get that, but it is one. And to have someone in the league and specifically a goaltender get under people's skin, the way that Jordan Bennington does is remarkable and noteworthy. And this is the constant carrot in front of the mule 
when it comes to this situation because everybody is thinking the same thing. David Breezewalk, get out of the way. Let these two guys go. Give us what we want here. Again, this is ripped out of the pages of professional wrestling. No, they're not going to fight here on a Wednesday night. You'll have to buy the pay-per-view to watch that. There's an old line about things like this in hockey. I believe it was Conn Smythe who said it. If we don't stop all this fighting, we're going to have to make bigger buildings. 